So, hello, hello. No, I'll start again. Go on, mess it up already. I'm, I'm normally so good. I'm normally so good. Well, leave, leave that bit in. Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode 44 of the Invented Marketing Club. We're here every Friday uh, so we can all build a better marketing strategy. We've got Claire with us as normal. Hello, Claire. How are you doing? Good morning, Ben. Um, Claire runs the club. She organises everything. It, it wouldn't happen without Claire. Our guest today is Chris. Say hello, Chris. Morning, Ben. How are you? Yeah, very good. Thank you. Do you want to just let everyone know a little bit about what you do? Yeah, so um, I have a small digital marketing agency that focuses on, um, well, solely on SEO and um, organic traffic traffic growth. We've worked with you for a number of years now, actually. Um, it's I think been you a while now. It has, and I think you initially came to do a report. In fact, you were introduced to us through Catherine Ivory, if I remember. I was. I was a client and, originally. Yeah, exactly. And it's, it's, it's a bit of both, actually. Um, but you came to do a review of our website at the time. And, and then we've worked with you um, with many clients since. And I, I, I see you as my SEO guru. You know, I, I know quite a lot, but you know a lot more. So that's why Chris is with us today to look at our new website. We were hoping to go live with it, but there were just a few teething issues and, and things we needed to do. So we're going to be looking at the staging site today. But, you know, to all intents and purposes, it's very close to live. So it's a good good time for Chris to look at it and pull it apart, basically, and say where we're going wrong and where we need to focus on it, much as I do for other clients. Where should we start, Chris? Um, I think we should start by giving a little bit of an overview of um, what's important to look at, uh, or what the areas are that I look at um, and that everybody should look at with their website or have yeah. somebody look at for them. So really, um, when it comes to doing a, a review of a website like this, um, it basically falls into two camps. So you've got uh, on-site, which is things that are on your website that affect SEO positively and negatively, and you have off-site, which is effectively things that, again, positively and negatively affect your site. Um, starting with on-site, I mean, a good place to look, just always start is a technical, you know, is it technically built correct does it work is it fast enough there's lots of different areas that we look at to make sure that you know technically it's sound um one i one thing i noticed when i loaded the staging site which um was that the the image on the on, you've got there loaded quite slowly so you know it's just making sure that images are correct in the correct file type so i would suggest using webps normally um and that's the format that's like jpeg but it's a, a more modern format and it's, it's about half the size isn't it more or less than half the size often and um, it's very uh web friendly mm. um the other thing you can do as well is with really big images you can preload them so you can ask the server to load the image as it's loading the rest or before it's loading the rest of the page which speeds things up there's various other things you can you can use and plugins and all sorts of stuff to to speed up the loading of um of images so I think, yeah, starting with the technical side of things is always a good place to look at, you know, is it, is it technically sound? Um, you know, I'm pretty sure most of these things you would have looked at, but um, that's one area. Then in terms of on-site, we then the next thing we'd look at um, is really um, falls into the camp of content, I suppose. You know, how much content is there? Um, you know, are you covering a topic thoroughly? Um, is it is it well written is it seo optimized um there's lots and lots of different things we look at in terms of content on site uh, and the purpose of different types of content so uh yeah that would be the next area that i would look at um and then you can move them potentially move them to off-site which is um things that will affect your business or your website um off-site so when i say off-site i mean generally mean other websites that link to your website or um, the other camp, which is, has some sort of, um, has an overlap really would be digital PR as well. So, you know, are you getting featured? You know, are you being written about positively? Um, it, it doesn't actually matter, uh, although it's beneficial, very beneficial. It doesn't actually matter if you're being linked to, but is your brand name being written about in a positive light? You know, are you getting reviews on, you know, decent sites that are not your own um and uh are, are other people linking to linking to you 
So, you know, if, if people are linking to you in a positive way, um, that's seen as a basic like a vote of confidence in Google's eyes. You know, this this website is being linked to, um, you know, so the, there must be something of interest there. There's so, still a benefit uh, for links from social media as well. There is, but generally um, links from social media. I think more yes is, a, is the short answer, but the, the, the better way to explain it is that traffic from social media is, is better than links. And the links are going to bring you the traffic because people will click through a link to get to you. But it's the traffic you get from social media, which is, is probably more beneficial um, to you, um, particularly if you're if once the traffic gets to your site, you're having positive engagement. Um, and that's another thing to, to mention as well. It's obviously on site from an on site perspective, when people visit your website. It, so if they are not finding what they're looking for, they're not going to stick around. So you need to ensure that they are finding what they're looking for. And that, you know, those things I've mentioned previously in terms of good quality content um, will help that. Uh, and there are tools, as you know, there are tools that you can check these things. So, you know, using analytics, et cetera, you can check your bounce rate. Um, and your bounce rate generally is, if your bounce rate is very high, um, which is somebody coming onto a page, not doing any other activity and then coming back straight back off it, um, then you know you've got a problem and you need to address that. Um, and uh, yeah, there's various ways of doing that, but I've kind of gone like this. So I, I, if you want to need to drill down into anything or look at specific pages, I'll, I'll, I'll let you guide me. Well, should we start with what we want to achieve? Of course. What, you know, because otherwise it's so broad. There's so much you could talk about. It, it would fill days. I think we could go on for days asking <laughs> yeah. questions. So let's keep it. Let's keep it to the hour. Um, with our website. I mean, there's so many different areas we can focus on. And we, we tackle marketing in a very broad sense of what yeah. we do. And, and web design is a big element to that. And there's three different products, really, that we sell. One is the club, which is this. Yeah. One is the coaching, which is like this, but one-to-one -one or one-to-a-team, a small team. And then the other is web development. Yeah. And they're the three products. Now, you know, in terms of the coaching that we're doing, I was just talking to Chris and Claire earlier that you know we don't really need any more business in that area. I would like it, but we don't need any more business in that area. In terms of web development, that's ticking on nicely too. That's good. The one area we do want to build up and that I want to focus our time on is the marketing club. Because we produce this weekly, and I, you know what, I would produce it anyway, even if no one watched, because I always get something from it. It's my continuous professional development. And it's nice to catch up with Claire and other people like Chris who join as well. Uh, you know, we'd do it anyway. But it's something that I, I know that clients do benefit from. It's really useful to refer to. And so it's worth doing it from where we are. But if we get more people to buy into it, it doesn't cost us any more money and we can, we can then help more people. So it's an area that would be worth focusing on in terms of optimization because it doesn't cost us any more to, to, um, to run. So it's perfect. Okay, would you wanna to go to the Marketing Club page? Let's go to that page. So we've actually, on this new site, we're focusing more on that. That's the one that's right at the front. Okay, so my first question to you would be, have you done any or how much um, keyword research have you done to look for what, People I, are I have done a little bit. I did a little bit of okay. homework in advance. I'm just going to try and pull it up here. Um, that's the first place I would start is to, and, and once doing that keyword research to see what people are likely searching for um, would be the first place to start. So let me um, bring up what I did and we'll see if we can go through it. So this is for the club. Ignore the others. I've done it for the web design and the coaching as well, but the club's sure. the important bit. Um, now, if we're just thinking of, people searching for the word club or marketing club or business marketing club. There are a few people searching for that, but not many. Yeah. And, and, and it's really, it's really specific. You know, people, there aren't many people who have a particular need for a marketing club. I don't think people are looking for a marketing club. Yeah. So it's actually quite difficult to optimize for. Let's have a look at the, um, a few more results here. I think this was from SEO Surfer, the tool that you recommended, Chris. Okay, yeah. So these are a few other related terms that came up. So marketing club, influencer marketing club, um, the marketing club, all-star marketing club, podcast marketing club. In fact, yeah. the, um, the business marketing club is 
that is a claim uh, that is a club aimed at marketeers i think whereas okay. our club isn't ex- it isn't not aimed at marketeers but it's more aimed at business owners or or um marketing managers in the team or something like that okay if you so if you, that's our initial problem okay so if you were to google what you think somebody well you just said you don't think you would look for it but let's if try somebody it. Was so going to google. It, what do you think that they would type type in marketing club okay so your first challenge is that somebody's got a partial match domain there because they've got the words marketing club in their domain name so that's going yeah. to be a challenge off the bat to what i would there, suggest yeah. the other thing would suggest we look at um is yeah if you if you expand the people also are so open and close a question and see what happens open and close a top question and do it a couple of times and just see what what extras appear so this is a good way of finding out if there are other questions these are all questions that people have been asking and we look at this and see if there's anything relevant um and uh, marking doing a club nothing way of phrasing specific it specific there if you go to the bottom of the page ben is there any in the um right to the bottom what we've got there business marketing club so mark business marketing club obviously other people are searching for business marketing club as you said um do, 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 do. i mean probably given what you're doing business marketing club would probably be the closest keyword that i would i would look at again you're gonna you're gonna have the challenge of somebody having an exact match domain there. yeah um the next thing i would do would be to bring up google search console and look at what your current that current page okay the search results um, and then choose the page or go to new and then and the new and then exact, filter the page yeah okay, go exactly so, page url um i actually i need to bring up the live one yeah you have to do it on the live site yeah so let's just bring up the exact page and then copy that in there sorry for anyone if i'm flicking screens around but basically i'm just trying to get the url so it's exact and then i'm pasting it in to filter i think we just need to do it by marketing club there so it filters the results in Google Search Console. Yeah, and then if you now um, do audit by, by impressions. Okay, so we can now, so basically what this has done immediately is is, based, is filter the page, the page on Ben's website and now showing um, impressions for search queries. So these, you know, club marketing capital, campaigns and marketing for clubs and all this kind of stuff that's listed there are phrases that people have typed into google and then on the right hand side you can see the number of impressions that ben's page has had for that over a three month period if you scroll up ben and just add in there so you've got the position and the right the right hand side of that one yeah to click that one on okay so and extend the time frame to like 12 months yeah so let's go for a full year Okay, so now we can see that marketing club, you are you know, over a 12 month period, you're position 22 at the moment. Um, digital marketing club, there's you know, 200 impressions, over, so it's 63rd. So what we, the positive here is that we know that you are getting impressions for the terms that you want to rank for, but the, the current negative is that you're, you're so far buried in Google that nobody's ever gonna find you. It's organic right yeah it's on what the, the third page yeah so um the the next stage of what i would do on here is i would use the um the reg edit tool to see if there are any questions that are being asked how what where when why sort of questions um which would lead to um yeah, so have you got the whole that, that, that regular? Yeah, so let me just show change. people what I'm gonna what what we've done. So I've just got it in a new tab just to save the code. But if you if you go up to and go new query, and I'll open this query up, what you can do is select custom regex, and then you copy in this bit of looks like nonsense code. But um, for anyone who knows regular expressions, they're incredibly powerful ways of filtering bits of text. Um, and all of these symbols will mean something. Now, you don't need to know what any of that means. You just need to know that it's going to bring up words that are, what is it, about seven um, yeah, if you change, words? Change, change that to five, Ben, just to give us a chance of seeing more and apply that. Yeah, so that um, we put this in and then apply it. 
and it brings up lots of questions that people say that we our website is found for is that right yeah so these are the questions this, this is it's site-wide currently without a filter an extra, extra page filter on but these are questions that people are asking in google which you are your website um is receiving impressions for that's over the last seven days that's let's expand that out yeah to 12 months so just just as a side note really of, of why this is so powerful then just so people could get some extra value from this doing this gives you more topics to write about google is designed mainly uh, apart from wanting to make money to answer people's questions so if you're um if you're looking to try and improve the ranking of your website. And it may well be that you don't cover a topic as thoroughly as another, another website or a competitor. One thing you can do is come in here, put this reg edit, reg edit on, um, and there's others that I will share with you that you can put as sort of um, show notes that um, allow you to look, and if you order it by impressions, you can see what people, what, what questions people are asking and if it's something that you haven't written about, you know, there's one there, why is proofreading important in business? That is a blog post in its own right. So I would take that type, that I would use that exact title and I would write a piece of content around why. I think, I think we do, but it's interesting. If we, if we do, it's not getting any clicks. No, but you, it, you then have to delve deeper to see what page that relates to and everything else. But mm. The point is that if you've not written about it, because you already have, I know you've already written about proofreading previously, but if you hadn't written about proofreading and you're getting impressions on a page, writing a page, uh, an, an article or a blog post specifically on that, that answers that question. Um, and then if it's relating to another page, linking it internally to that page is yeah. going to help Google understand that you're more of an authority on that topic. Yeah. Um, so yeah, going back to the marketing club page, if you can add a filter Ben to the um, to just looks at the marketing club page to see if we've got any questions. Oh, re related to, to the marketing club page. Yeah, okay. and then you do page, and then just filter it just so it's the marketing club page, just to see if there's any questions people are asking in terms of that page. Yeah, that's it. Okay, so what do we have? Um, how to get? you want to join us? Mm, that's a good question. Yeah. So we do have a couple. So in terms of what I would call supporting content, content that can support your main marketing club page, you know, that may well be an article or a blog post you want to write, how to get better at marketing, which goes through various different things people can do to improve their marketing. Yeah. But as calls to action throughout the page, um, you can say, well, you know, why not get some well, that'll be number 10 on the list, well. won't it, Chris? Sorry? <laughs> How to get better, you join our club. Exactly, yeah. Um, but, um, you that's know... Actually, it's not, that's an interesting phrase. I've not thought about that, but that's, that is interesting that people, you know, who want help. And I found this from a lot of people who work in marketing. You know, they are marketing for another company. Yes. And they lack that communication with the outside world. And often, all they've got is a sales manager that they're talking to. And yeah. no one else in the business who cares about what they do. It's a very thankless job. I know, Claire, you've done, you've done it before. And, and actually, you do, you do need a community. Yeah. And so often you are looking for, how do I actually do my job? But not only that, there's so much, so many moving pieces to marketing online. It's being able to keep up to date with everything as well. You know, you need somewhere that you can go for reliable information as well. Yeah. Um, and, and something like the your inventive marketing club, it would be, you know, a great place to do that. But um, yeah, so going going back to that page, Ben. So if you go to um, so looking at the page now, the next thing I would be looking at is, you know, are we covering all the topics and all of the is that is is the structure of the page in terms of the content ticking all the boxes in terms of what we're looking to try and rank for? um and i would say probably not so if you go back to the first performance tab where we had literally all the different um phrases yeah so we've got on here digital marketing club is the third mm -hmm. one down there you know if we go back to the, the your actual page there's nothing that struck there's nothing that basically jumps out at me immediately that i can see and i'm happy to be corrected if i'm wrong that has that phrase digital marketing no, club. it doesn't 
So, you know, things like that, looking at, okay, looking at the content and, and particularly the head, the H tags, the heading tags. So your H2s. Um, yeah. And I would potentially change your H1 to join my in, you know, inventive digital marketing club. Because, you know, that is giving a good signal to Google that, you know, that is what, yeah, absolutely. It couldn't be that. I'm not precious about Inventive Marketing Club being in there because at the moment we don't, they don't care about the brand of the club. No. They just care about, do you do what I want? And that's what Digital I want. Marketing Club. So that's yeah. exactly, um, you know, if somebody lands on this page, um, then ultimately, you know, that this is going to tick a box. I'm looking for a Digital Marketing Club. The first sentence they read, join my digital marketing club. It's a tick and a tick. It's exactly what they were expecting to see. Yeah. They're going to read on to, to a certain extent. Um, but yeah, so I would go through and just make sure that all the key phrases that you would expect, all the key phrases that people are searching for, um, in for the, you know, maybe the top 10, Ben, something like that, top 10, yeah. the highest um, impressions. Just make sure those those phrases are on yeah. the, the page. So marketing club, digital marketing club, um what was the I'm other not one? sure about this one um no it, 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 you have to be selective but i just mean you just go through them and you would you, they would jump out at you business marketing club business marketing yeah you know, make sure that things like the business marketing club maybe is that in a h2 anywhere you no know, make it sure wouldn't be th these are in in the headings and then once you've gone through that and done that on the headings go back through the list um and see if there's anything that is very relevant um that's not in your actual body content you know can you reword a few things to make sure that it's it's more relevant yeah lots of opportunities to do that in the copy that we've got here i think yeah and it's a decent length page as well it's quite a, compared to the current page this page look, appears to me to be longer the more content which is good yeah good um so i think Aside from checking for sort of technically, you know, the things I've mentioned before in terms of site, site speed, image optimization, um, you know, all, all the kind of basics of technical SEO. The next thing I'd look at on this page is um, what are, are there any uh, external uh, votes of confidence, any external links coming to this page specifically? Um, external from right. our website or just external from this page? Uh, external, as in other people's websites, not, not right. on your site. So external okay. links. So, so what's um, the best way of finding that out? The best way of finding that out would be to use uh, a tool that I use, which is called Ahrefs. Oh, yes. I will just set it up now and then I can share my screen um, and then we can have a look. The other way we could look for this specific link and seeing if, if anyone's linking to it, but it's a bit harder. Um, yeah, I so know. I, I can share my screen. Yeah, do you want to swap over? Let me stop and you go. Uh, share, share screen, share screen. That's showing my screen. Yeah, yes. Okay, so what I've done here is I'm using this tool called Ahrefs, which um, I use literally all day long. And what this is doing is looking at any external links that are pointing to that page and um, external referring domains. So if we look here, it says there's 12. Um, and we'll, this gives us a list of the actual domains that are pointing to that page. Sometimes you pick up spammy links as well. It's natural to pick up those, you know, automated links as well. Um, and then this here, DR, this is domain rating. So it's out of 100. The higher the number, the more powerful the site generally to make it keep it very simple. Uh, and then you have what's called do follow and no follow. So do follow is um, like a vote of confidence that they're saying, yeah, we're, you know, we trust you 100%. And a no follow is, you know, is less trustworthy, let's say, but in terms of how much um, a website will, how much value it passes, I should say. Yeah. But so here, like this is a really good link, WordCamp. Very, it's very relevant. Um, and, you know, the anchor text that is linking to that page is rather inventive which is great um that's uh, interesting that was a sponsorship so i sponsored one of their word camps it cost me i don't know about 50 dollars yeah um and it's the link start there and it's a do follow which is interesting it's a good link um and then looking through here there's some of these just look like 
uh, you've got an inventive people link there which yeah that's not a particularly strong link though yeah. sadly so and then the next thing i would check on here as well is to look at what the anchor text is coming into the page yeah um and just two things to check really one make sure it's not um over optimized so you've not got you know many many occurrences of of marketing club mm -hmm. um uh, yeah you you want a nice mixture you, you don't want to be looking like you're you're trying to game the system at all in any way um so this looks very nice and, and uh, natural um what i would say is that what you need is more anchor tech, more more people external people linking to this page um because at this moment in time it doesn't appear to rank for many very many keywords so you need more external endorsement then basically um, yeah, so something you and you were talking about this before we started recording, but some um, would something like some PR help so you can get um, yeah, getting so, some PR out there on on some kind of publication that's related to business. Yeah, so PR would really help, um, particularly if you can get it syndicated into uh, local or national newspaper papers online. Yeah, um, but realistically speaking, you should be able to do um, outreach to other people who have digital marketing blogs. Or blogs that are in the marketing sphere or business sphere, uh, business would be fine. Um, and you know, write a piece of content for them. Um, you know, negotiate to get it published on their site um, with a link back to this this particular page. Um, and then over time, it doesn't it doesn't happen instantly. It takes at least three months for you to see any benefit at all. Uh, over time, obviously, the value of this page from in Google's eyes, from an external link point of view, will increase. So I'll stop sharing my screen if I, if I go take over again. There we go. Um, the other thing I was going to say, or the next thing then really is, um, and I think I touched on this before, was um, you want, so that's external links. Now you can also give signals to Google that a page is important by, by using internal links. So um, I would say that um what you would want to do i mean you can use tools to work this out it's probably not for right now you can use something like screaming frog to see how many internal links you've got going to this particular page um but really you want to make sure that this is a highly linked to page from an internal link yes yeah, so i think before we started you you said it should be number two it should yeah, be ideally, apart yeah. from the if home this, the most important your, page yeah if this is your if, if this is the page that you want to push the most, then you need to give Google the, the signal that this is a very important page. Uh, and the way I would do that would be by writing articles on your um, site mm -hmm. um, that cover um, topics relating to the, to the topics that you cover in, in, the, in the club and or uh, pain points for people, people that are, you know, answering people's questions um marketing related questions or even potentially even business questions uh, and then internally linking from those articles to your digital marketing club uh, page yeah and then the pages that have the biggest opportunity to get the largest amount of traffic potentially then also have some external links pointing to those articles as well so it's not just external links to this page but it's Correct. getting external links to some key articles that we want to which, get found yeah key articles which then in turn link to this page because effectively they call it link juice so the juice will flow so from a link from an article internally from an external site to your article yeah. your article then has a link from the, the the article page to your digital marketing club page the power of that link juice will flow through to the to to the the end page, so to speak. So, um, and I can't, I guess this this would make it look certainly more natural rather than absolutely. all links coming onto this page. You don't it, really want it to look like it's happened organically. Everything needs to needs to look organically, and to be fair, most things do happen organically. But um, if you want to com compete for you know these sort of terms, digital marketing club. Um, without having a huge site with, you know, covering every single topic you can think of relating to digital marketing, um, you're going to need some external links. You're yeah. not going to do it without links. So um, one of your mantras, Chris, I know, 
<laughs> yeah, I mean, you can you can content will get you so far, but yeah. you need links to validate your content. Really, absolutely, because that that's how Google works. It's all on links, and if everything is just about your site, well, there's no additional referrer um, saying how good your site is. I call um, it a vote of confidence. At, out of interest i mean i've always thought wikipedia is quite a good source uh, from a trust point of view for a link yeah. and um we had a client who managed to get a link to their um pub on wikipedia which they edited themselves because it was relevant they happened to own a piece of land which was um is it an ss a site of special special scientific interest okay and so that was on wikipedia and they managed to get a link because the pub was in, in it uh, it was yeah. owned by that place and so that was a very tangential but actually gets them a direct link from wikipedia which is quite interesting having that link from wikipedia is excellent um doing your own edits and then sticking is very few well mastering. yes i've got to check i did warn them that uh, might not but but um i think i've done one ever myself that stuck so and it's still there today but it, yeah they're, they're wikipedia um the, the people who um look after the site you know the community um they're very hot on anybody trying to add new links. Quite particular aren't they yes you could say that yeah so you were talking um, about articles should we have a quick look at the articles and yeah, i've got I'm, i've got a few articles and it, i'm trying to do what you say but we haven't really you know because i i know some of what you say from talking to other clients and speaking to us before so we, we we're moving in that direction we're not quite there yet uh what i've got are three at least one key article. So the, the main one here is this marketing checklist. Okay. I've actually got three of them. They're three different levels. There's like a beginner one, a pro one, and an expert one. The final two you need to be part of the club for. Yeah. So if we have a look at it, what it is is a checklist covering lots of different areas of marketing that you need to have, you need to look at, like what's your objective, um, who's your ideal customer, um, yeah. have you got your stats in place, is mm -hmm. your website fast, all that sort of stuff. So I've got yeah. what I can think of as quite a nice, long, useful, relevant article here mm -hmm. that would be good. I think it would be good to, it's a, it's a, um, a cornerstone, really. It's my yeah. hub where yeah. I want people to go. And then, then at the end, you know, you progress to the next level. And um, if, if um, you know, I didn't, if I was logged, if I, need, I would need to be logged in normally and it would then say, oh, well, you need to subscribe to get to the next level. So this is, I was hoping that this could be one of those key articles, these cornerstone articles that I can use, along with the other articles I've got can help maybe point to that checklist. And then that checklist then refers to the club. Yeah. Do you think that that would be, do you think that would work? That's good. It's a, a good strategy. Yes. Um, I mean, if you go back into that simple marketing strategy post, um, one thing I would say is that um, if somebody, well, number one, you need to promote this page. So this page needs to be promoted on, you know, which I'm sure you probably already have done it on LinkedIn on all your socials and all the rest of it. You, you, actually, we haven't. It's been, no. I've been quite tentative on it. Okay. So you need to promote it. Um, you also um, would, wouldn't hurt to try and get some reference to it from external sites as well to get some links going to it uh, it doesn't have to be many just a small handful of relevant links um the uh, the next thing i would then say is like you said from an internal linking point of view make make sure that um if you want this to be you know a pillar page or cornerstone page is very various different words that people use make sure that um you know you're internally linking to it as much as makes sense to yeah. use something like link whisper to that's a plugin for wordpress isn't it yes to help find you know opportunities to link to this page um, and the other thing i would do is i would probably add some additional design to the page to make some more what i would class as in your face call to action yeah so we do have one little through, call to action here yeah which to be fair nobody's ever going to see it doesn't really stand out does it it's not it needs to be, you know, if you go scroll right to the top, that image it catches your eye because it's, you know, there's different colours in it and everything else. You need something that is going to make somebody stop and look. They're not necessarily just going to scroll past it. Yeah. So, and also, I think, explain that this is part of my marketing strategy that comes from the club. 
yeah, he's got yeah. to link it right in that first paragraph. We, we've got to link what this is to the club, that the club drives this. Yes. Um, also, I was also thinking that phrase that we saw, where was it? Um, how, how to get better at marketing. I wonder yes. if that could be incorporated into that title as Absolutely. well. Absolutely. Yeah, no, 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 no. I don't see any reason why not at all. I just think as you go, as you scroll down on this page, about after the first section, once you finish planning, where, so basically I would replace that get help with your market enjoyment club today little button with effectively maybe even a full width banner mm -hmm. that is, you know, really in, in, you can't miss it. And I would use that to break up the sections. Um, and because I think it, that button is too easy to scroll past. Um, personally that's no no I, I agree that that's probably my personality coming out in this I don't want to shout too much but you're absolutely right yeah it, it's what I would advise a client to do <laughs> yes exactly I, I'm the same but I wouldn't want to push it in you know from your own personal perspective I can understand completely but from the point of view of you know conversion rate optimization you're not going to convert very well with that right um, and I would again just uh, you know in between each of these different sections that you've put together, um, you know, don't do the same call to action either. Yep. Make sure that they're it's eye catching, but don't use the same set of words. Use something. Yeah, maybe try and relate it back to the previous section. Yeah, um, and also try and um, try and use text that makes people say yes. So you know, maybe ask a question: Do you need help with? x if they've just gone through a section and referenced something behind you know do you need help with x you know join our join my club today um because if they can say yes mentally it's much easier to get them to then yeah, and if they don't why are they on the site in the first place? exactly so um yeah just try and try and get people to say yes in the in what they're reading yeah that's a good idea um so uh, that's good. So I so basically, I think there is some additional design. Maybe um, it's it's very formulaic at the moment. I think we could probably pull out key bits as well. So when they're looking, maybe there's some, we call out key ones. If they're short on time, they can just make sure these are done. Um, yeah. Maybe a few images. I think it can be made a bit more exciting. But apart from that, maybe just um, looking at the words as well and making sure that we are. Um, well, I don't. I don't actually think foundation level needs to be in your um in your h1 there no uh, you could put foundation level underneath the image you could have it as almost like a subheading yeah um, or, you know that would difficulty. work you'd have allowed like, you could have like difficulty and then a colon foundation level something yeah. like that um but you could have marketing strategy you know and then use that term what was that well, yeah, what was uh, the how term to how better to get better at marketing, marketing. yeah yeah so, so marketing yeah, strategy is like the way to get better at marketing something yeah. like that yeah so um, there's various different bits and pieces, but you, you can do sort of an iterative approach to making this page, you know, really, really good, but you need to promote it as well. Yeah. The other thing I would suggest you do um, in terms of the club is do a press release. Yeah. So I know that you've been doing it for a while, but not everybody knows that. So um, you can do a press release which basically says that you know Ben from Rather Inventive has launched this um, you know in, in innovative mark, marketing club to help small business owners with their marketing um, and it just serves to talk about you the business the club uh, in, a, in a press release or in a third person um, way of writing and then that gets then you what you look to do then is then try and do two things one you pitch it well ideally you want a third party to pitch it because you don't want to be cheerleading yourself you want a third party to pitch that to local like local publications newspapers um, as a bit of a good news story for local business there uh, you know yeah. i mentioned before one of them but um i've had some success with is um punchline gloucester they they were very oh, yeah. fine enough to publish something um, which is business, and that's a business publication in itself anyway. Um, and then once you've exhausted the opportunities to pitch it directly to journalists effectively, then use uh, a, a PR distribution service 
to have that piece of PR distributed um, from That's a, a more automated process. It's automated and basically it's it's more for the SEO benefit than it is for your traditional uh, traditional PR benefit. Yeah. But you want to kind of do both and in that order. So you want to pitch it first, see if you can get it published anywhere. Once you've exhausted your attempts to get it pu published, then do the SEO angle. Um, that will serve for two things. One, you don't know where it's going to get picked up. Mm -hmm. You don't know who might say yes to publishing it. Um, so you potentially can act as, as more, um, more business for you coming in. Secondly, it's um, building brand awareness in terms of not just for other people, but from a Google's perspective, you're saying, I'm relevant, I'm in the news, this is my brand. Um, and uh, in terms of linking, link it back to the homepage, don't link it back to this page. Yeah, because will that make it look too optimized? We, with PR, you, you, with a press release, you never want to use a keyword anchor. Um, right. You always want to use your brand name or URL, and you always want to do it to the home page. Yeah, no, it makes sense. That's typically how they'd want to do it anyway. Yeah. yeah. The other question or, that's come to mind as well in that respect is, from your home page, is there a contextual link to the marketing club? Uh, there is a, a learn more. Um, right. Anchor link okay. there, but no. Uh, is there any other? Is there so anyone here that you could put a contextual link? So by contextual, using the words marketing club in there. Yeah, just yeah, something like. Yeah, I could. Pro club. We could. We could put one in. Yes, yeah, certainly yeah. in this section here. The vast majority of um, the vast majority of your links, and I know this because I've looked at your site before, come to your homepage, which is the same for pretty much every site on the on the internet. Most of the links go to the homepage. So if you want to funnel some link juice through it would be useful to have a yeah, um, yeah, contextual yeah. link saying digital marketing club, which links through to your digital marketing club page. Yeah, so, that's an easy win. We can do that. Yeah, straightforward. Um, um, yeah. So that's good. So we've got a couple of other articles potentially like that that could work as cornerstone articles. Um, this is the main one, the marketing strategy here, but that we can change the titles. This is more about content. Um, I can do a lot more to this. This is just a video, but really it needs to be, uh, we need to bring a, a transcript of the video out and start yep. putting it into here. Um, and then they're exactly the same with this one. It's about five-star reviews. The reason I, I brought this, it's a much more niche specific um, thing that people would be interested in, uh, in. But I think a lot of businesses just want to get more reviews. They want more interest. And I think this, what this does is a specific question that people ask, but it can drive the need to do many other things that, that yeah. bring marketing into it. So, so I've kind of, th these are the ones I want to be found and uh, that I really want to funnel people through to that then bring people through to the club. Um, you, you were saying earlier about some of our articles. Let me try and find one like this, for example. Yeah. Um, so this would be a news post. So I'm, I'm, I'm putting it out there because it's interesting. It's relevant. It's not particularly long because it's just a quote from another um, article. So I'm giving them a backlink. I'm giving um, This Week in Security. In fact, no, that's not. I can't give them a backlink. They're just a, a newsletter. But it's an article I found interesting. I want my clients to know. We've got a lot of articles like this, which you would consider thin content. They're very, you know, there is no more to this article than that. That is yes, it. Very, very. It, it's really useful. It's, it's yeah. time critical. So at some point, it's not going to be useful anymore. But um, I want clients to know, is, is this going to impact on our SEO? Is that going to be a problem? Or is that, I, I just don't need to worry about that as long as I'm optimizing the other pages and linking through to them? I think, I don't think that it, if all of your posts were like that, I would say it would become a problem. Um, but they're not all going to be like that. And they're not, they're not all, they aren't all like that. Um, what I would say is that if you can collate the, these smaller pieces, these these snippets, um, and also feature them in a, a larger, more comprehensive post, mm -hmm. and that the smaller snippets link to the larger post internally, that would be a good way of, the, of having sort of a happy medium between these short pieces and obviously having the more longer comprehensive pieces of content. Yeah, and we so, spoke, there's an example we use um, offline, which was about pick rights and copyright yeah. protection and how they're they're basically trying to ex not extort people but they are 
I guess that's what it feels like. They're they trying like to, yeah, they're, they're trying to um, lay claims on copyright material that even the copyright owner isn't laying a claim on, but they know it's yeah. copy protected. Anyway, I won't go into the detail of it, but we come up quite high in searches for this very niche uh, area. Mm. One thing Chris was saying is, you know, the article's fine, but actually we've got lots of different articles about copywriting, copy protection, what it is, how it works, how to protect yourself to make sure you don't get that letter demanding money, um, where to get images from. I think we could actually pull some of those together to make a nice article about sourcing the right royalty free business license images, mm. bring in some of these areas. Would you say that would be a good thing to do to plate them in, into that one master article? Yes, but I wouldn't lose the article or I wouldn't lose the focus on the article that you have about pick rights. In fact, I'd probably expand, I would write a bigger, more comprehensive article around the topic of pick rights. Um, I do some keyword research around what people are searching for, which is, you know, is it legit? Is it a scam? Should I pay? All those kind of things. Um, and give them more substance to the topic. So you're, you're almost like the authority on answering that question. Yeah. Um, and then use that as a way of, you know, do you need help finding, um, you know, royalty free images, you know, join our club. It's not, it's not a great example as a call to action, but you see where I'm coming from. Yeah, absolutely. You can use, you can use a topic that, of, that's relevant to what you do, um, that lots of people are searching for. There's a lot of search volume around it to bring people into your funnel effectively. And a proportion of those people may join your club um, yeah. or you, you know, assuming you have the correct cookies, you could remarket them, you know, yes. uh, that you've brought them into your, you know, you've pixeled them, you've got them in your funnel and you could remarket them for the club. Which um, means that they're going to see adverts for the club when they're not on our website. Correct. Yeah. Um, I mean, the, the, doing it. There is. And it's interesting with that because a lot of people are affected by that issue, but they are business owners who've got this yeah. letter and they're like, what do I do about this? Or they're yes. marketing people who've, 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 who've taken over a website and some previous web developer in the past has put this image on without seeking proper permission. Yeah. Um, so they're stuck with it. So often they are relevant people, actually. So even though I can't deal with it, I'm not a lawyer, I can give you some can advice. Tell, you can give them, um, you can tell them about um you can tell them what they can do and yeah. you know you know go speak to get some legal advice you can tell them that it is legit you can tell them what you know about it um uh, but you can then bring it around to you know to avoid having you know do you need help to avoid this happening again you know here's how to uh, you could even reference an article the, the other article that you were mentioning about about sourcing royalty free images um again using that as an opportunity again to funnel people into the marketing club you know yes people um like to read and understand how to do things but some people also like to you know have a, have a group atmosphere and share ideas and you know this different people learn in different ways is what i'm trying to say no absolutely so in terms of writing articles obviously i could work with copywriters uh, to produce this sort of material like yeah. catherine Avery um or or, or jack from core tree but a lot of the content that we produce is via this session so in every week right. we're producing at least 45 minutes to an hour of content so you know we've got loads of um these let me just try and find one that's relevant um oh this will do yeah so this is um a couple of weeks ago we did uh, we revisited the linkedin essentials workshop that i'd already presented um right. presenting it again now if I go into this, see if it's actually going to do it. Now I've gone to a restricted page because I'm not logged in. Right. So that's something we might want to talk about. But if I were a pro member, I could go into this and I can watch the whole video. Fab. But from an SEO point of view, all we can see is that. Yeah. And an image. And if I go more, it goes to this restricted page. So from that's what Google's going to see. So there's tons of useful content in there, which could then refer people back to the club to sign up if they liked it. But they, Google doesn't know about it because mm. we're restricting the content on here. Do you think, so that being said, do you think there's value in getting some element of transcript from this video and put it into the post and allow people to read that for free? I would, yeah, can't watch the I, would video? Do, I would have it transcribed and then show X, X amount. I read it yourself and think, 
that's really valuable. That's really valuable. That's what's really what's going to give a good value? Yeah. Yeah. You get to a point where you go, okay, that's enough value. You know, people should <laughs> pay pay to get any more value. You know, once yeah. you, um, yeah, once you are satisfied that you've given enough value, um, you know, for, for without them going behind a paywall, effectively, yeah. um, then stop. But yeah, it would be good to get a tran transcript of it. I think so. And you, you can get, there's various different ways to get them. And YouTube will give you its own transcript, but that might, that needs not, a bit of work. Not particularly accurate. <laughs> no. Yeah. Um, there is a service. I can't remember the name of it. And there are lots of services will do it automatically for you. You can submit the audio and they'll give you a transcript back. And yeah. it's automated and good. Um, there is a, something else we could do, which links it in with YouTube, because all of the videos are hosted on YouTube, but they're set to private. So no one else can see them. So again, that's not going to benefit us, but it might be possible for Claire to maybe extract out a segment, a teaser, yeah. like a five minute teaser from, from yeah. it that, that covers something interesting, but not everything. And then obviously putting a, a tail on it with join the club. Absolutely. And that what we could do is we could, instead of showing the main video, we can have the teaser video showing instead for people who aren't joined. Mm -hmm. That I, I'm, I would feel that that's good as well because the video is on YouTube um Absolutely. another search engine another piece of content linking back through to this this particular article yeah absolutely all good things to do and then share that as well so you know because yeah. it is it, i know you do do bits and pieces on linkedin but i would do potentially more you know um, you are claire <laughs> sorry <laughs> um yeah yes. do more on linkedin basically there's a lot of um a lot of people that i speak to who are in the same space you know digital marketing space who do things on linkedin linkedin tends to be where most of their work's coming from now and that yeah. they're sharing just sharing valuable insightful things you know you're not not saying hey look at me and cheerleading yourself but actually sharing helpful things and then people will you know people appreciate that and then ultimately they'll they'll eventually pay for your time or pay to join the club etc well, I'm sure we might include an extract of you, Chris, in the next uh, in the next well, one. I don't know about that well. copyright and everything. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think we should wrap it up. I think. Let me see if I've got any other questions that I've got here. I think you've answered quite a few, and we've got a bit of work to do, Claire. Um, once we get it live, um, is there anything else here? We talked about narrowing down. Oh yeah, just a final question, maybe to finish it off. Something else we're thinking of doing. You might say, Ben, you've got enough to focus on right now. <laughs> One of the things we offer at the moment, uh, actually, it's not shown on here. If I go to the live site, one of the things we offer is a free call with me. Yep. We're going to be scrapping that and we're going to be changing it to a free landing page review or marketing review on the club for free. So they can come along for free for certain sessions. They're like every two months, okay. we're going to have one session is people i've met people who are sort of coming into our funnel can come onto the club completely for free mm -hmm. for us to review their landing page or review their marketing and just have a general chat with them they get a sense of the club they can see what it's like and i think we were going to allow them to stay on for the rest of the month and then they're okay. off so rather than having this we were looking to put together a questionnaire a very simple questionnaire that is trying to ask questions to deepen the need to have someone to help with their marketing. Right. Uh, and also filter people out. So start, yeah. start filtering people into, do you need one-to-one? -one? Because then maybe we want to speak more quickly. Do you just need help mm -hmm. um, and guidance and be part of a community and then the club will be best? Or do you need a website? So having rather than this where I have to do it and I have to spend my time to do it, which is great until you start getting a lot of these coming through. Well, that was going to be my next question. Have you had many come through? Yeah, we have. I mean, they tend to come from the workshops I do. Workshops are a huge driver of lead traffic, but we right. do get, get some coming through ad hoc or uh, maybe from the newsletter, people coming in from that. Um, but this takes up a lot of time. Claire started helping with them. But even then, really, I think the club is a really good way to do it because they get to see exactly what we do and it doesn't take up any more time. And it creates yeah. content. So I guess the question yeah. is, do you think it would be valuable to have a, I know it falls out on the side of SEO, but while you're here, Claire, um, Chris, is do you think it'd be valuable to have a survey? So that's really, if they're not sure, one of the actions is fill out this survey and we, we're going to ask, probing questions about how your marketing is doing and where you need help and that's going to help us direct them yeah i think i would i would 
not call it a survey. I'd want to, I don't know exactly what I would call it right now. I'd have to give it some thought, but um, like a, a five minute marketing review or something like that. Yeah, so it's, it's, yeah. It seems like it's a positive to them by them going through it. They're going to get something out. Yeah. So, you know, to identify, you know, identifying their marketing needs at a high yeah. level, really. Um, yeah, I think it's a great idea. It just is how you present it is going to be key. Um, and you ideally want, what I would potentially do, Ben, is have it as a, um, a an online review. But when they get to a certain stage, if they've selected a certain option or options, they get through to the point of, um booking a call with you yes so yeah it's like a filter process for you as well absolutely as it is for them so i would say yes do it as a as a, a review but if they you know click the right buttons they're going to get through to book a call with me because it's you know it's, it's worth it for them and for you um if they if they're not a good fit um then again you, you don't have to take the time to to potentially speak to them on the phone and everything else if you're getting quite a few people so yeah i kind of do an uh, a hybrid version of it i would still keep the the book a call but i would make make it more of a qualified call so they have to go through you know and qualify first yeah so that's why i'm thinking it would be for people who who are coming into uh, more than one-to-one -one coaching so it seems like they maybe got a bigger company that the yeah. sort of things they want a little bit more tricky that won't di directly be answered in the club and so they'll need to have that yeah try okay. and keep it really short try and keep it try and work out a small number of questions you know six eight questions tops um that they can they can ask, answer which gives you a good enough insight of whether or not they're a good fit or not because otherwise if it looks like it's really long people will get turned off by that and oh yeah absolutely it. you're no one want to do it no. yeah too right Cool. Thank you, Chris. Welcome. Um, I think it's been brilliant. I've I've got a lot out of that, actually. <laughs> Quite a lot. I know, Claire, I've seen you writing lots of notes. I'm glad you uh, might have to listen to the Thank recording you. back again. But in terms of a focus, I think we've we've really got a good idea now about a, a good way forward. And, th and then, Chris, you're gonna, we're, we're going to have to speak to you again in three months or so once we've done it. The website's live. We've implemented a lot of your ideas and we yeah. can start to see some of it working. Yeah, I think the final thing I would say as well is it, just to reiterate, do not underestimate the power of using Google Search Console and those regular expressions to pull out, you know, topics and, and article ideas. Um, it is it blew my mind when I first found it, and I've used it on many many client sites um, to bolster topics that they weren't, you know, as, as authoritative on as they should have been. Um, with, with, with great success, you know, literally just adding content, no, no links, nothing, just literally writing extra content, which which cover areas of the topic that um, weren't previously covered. So it is amazing. I've seen, you know, we've done it on client sites with you, and it's amazing what what interesting things come up. Um, yeah. Cool. Thank you very much, Chris. Hope to see you soon. Um, no to everyone else, we're here every Friday at 10 a.m. Um, we cover everything in marketing. You've had a good look now of <laughs> what, what we cover strategy social seo video pretty much everything um claire will keep you updated on the schedule every month she sends like a, a list of what's coming up and then uh, weekly what is going to be taking place that week um if you have anything exciting to share if you've got any really good stories do send them to claire support at ragrinvented.com we're happy to you know come on and talk to us about them and that's going to help you'll get showcased on the site you may even have a little clip of you on youtube on youtube and linkedin as well if you can't watch it live, you can share this with a friend. So if you can't attend, give, give your friend your link, let them come along, let them use your place, use that time to come along and ask questions. Um, just let Claire know, send an email to support a rather inventive and then she can welcome them in. And don't forget, you can catch up with any of the previous webinars on Basecamp. Thank you everyone for watching and we'll see you next week. Bye-bye.